world. Where the number of movies available is great, but many are so bad. You'll learn a new definition of hate. One man sifts and reviews through the movie sludge. One man will be the movie cop, jury, and judge. He goes by many names, but you know him by Movies Merida. Hey, all you beautiful movie-loving people out there, live from a red carpet somewhere, surrounded by celebrities, this is the Movies America Podcast with Van Ebert, where movie reviews meet cold brews, Van will review your favorite and maybe not so favorite movies, while enjoying some ice-cold beers and saying cheers! Now let's head into the theater and join our illustrious movie reviewer du jour, who's no doubt got the beer ready to pour, Van Ebert! <coughs> hey, everybody, hey, don't mind me. Hey, it's just, uh, oh, sicko Van over here. Welcome to Movies America podcast here. So, yep, yep, I've been uh, out of circulation. I've been out of the uh, the lineup here. I've been I've been sick, but that's all I'm going to say about that because uh, who really enjoys hearing people regale them of tales of them being sick? Not this guy, so I'm not going to make you suffer through that either. All right, so on a happier note, today we will be reviewing what apparently might just revive the movie theater industry here. This movie, this bombastic, this hugely successful, fantabulous movie that created the third biggest biggest box office opening of all time this past weekend. And I'm just now getting my podcast out because I've been... I've been, uh, I've had, I had, I've, uh, let's just say I just have had zero voice uh, for the last uh, almost two weeks. So, but now just getting it out here, that's my lame excuse, I know. But today we will be going over Spider Man No Way Home. That spell where you wanted everyone to forget the Peter Parker Spider Man. Be careful what you wish for. We started getting some visitors from every universe. The multiverse is real? Looks like we got competition. You're not Peter Parker. I am so confused right now. Parker. We need to send them back. And you're thinking, hey, I'm about to do something that could break the universe, run it by us next time. Deal. Let's catch some multiverse men. Peter, you're struggling. Look, there has to be another way. There are danger to our universe. Have everything you want. While the world tries to make you choose. Oh, oh boy, man. This movie had me pumped. I tell you, you got to go see this movie. I will just put that out there like right from the get-go here. But before we get into the... The real fun before you know we get the chips, dips, chains, whips all going here in the big old party and get this uh, and get this party going. A show, heavy, heavy day. We gotta do a little house cleaning here, okay? So, again, hey, this is Movies America podcast. Thanks a lot for listening, and you can find this podcast obviously on whatever podcast platform you're listening to it on right now. It's on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and many, 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 many other platforms uh, out there you can find this Movies America podcast on. And if you're on, at least on Apple Podcasts, uh, please, please give it a five-star rating if you feel so inclined, if you're feeling very friendly. And, uh, you know, give it a review if you like there. I mean, a review could be something as short as, hey, I like your podcast or I hate your podcast or, man, 
I wish podcasts were never invented because of your podcast, you know. And then, you know, also <laughs> feel free to download the episodes as well. So, but, uh, yeah, so five-star rating, review, and download the episodes. Not that hard. You know, it's kind of like a first-world problem. You know, it's not like I'm asking you to go out there and dig a ditch or, uh, you know, save a, a you know, a bus full of nuns. <laughs> All right. Pretty easy. Pretty easy. Uh, also, I am on Twitter and Instagram as well under Movies America if you want to share anything with me or check out any of my posts out there. Also, the podcast is on MoviesAmerica.com, and there are some podcasts or some uh, reviews out there on that website that aren't out on any plat um, any podcast platform. And then also, just to let you know, I periodically open rooms to just, just to talk about movies on what's called Twitter Spaces. If you haven't heard of that, feel free to Google that and check out what Twitter Spaces is and Clubhouse as well. Uh, those are just places where you can like open up a room and you could talk you know, audibly, you know, talk to, you know, strangers, uh, you know, that hopefully will soon become friends uh, in rooms there and, you know, just talk about movies and whatnot. That's what I talk about on there. So uh, every, every once in a while I'll start up a room there to talk about, you know, this week's movies or top 50 Adam Sandler movies or whatever, you know. So uh, so I occasionally do those. So you can check those out, uh, check out uh, notifications about those on Twitter Spaces and Clubhouse. And uh, also, typically, I should let you know that typically I don't do spoilers on my reviews. That will be changing today. Yes, this will be a rare spoiler-filled review here because, to be honest with you folks, I know it can be done. It's been done. But in order to do a decent review of this movie and not include spoilers would basically be like trying to do open heart surgery with a spork from KFC and a can of compressed air. I mean, this you this review is going to have plenty of spoilers. Because there is just too much in this movie that you know, is just, spoiler this, and spoiler that. So, you have been warned, young Padawan. Okay? So now that we've got that major disclaimer out of the way, let me introduce you to tonight's lucky beer that I will be drinking, because as you know, on every Movies America podcast, I do enjoy a uh, a bout a bout of liquid fresh refreshment, and tonight's liquid refreshment will be Samuel Adams Winter Lager, because as you know, tis the season, and in a few days, jolly old Saint Nick will be coming down the chimney, or. My friendly neighborhood burglar. You know, who knows, right? One will be getting blown away by all the guns that I have, and the other one will be getting uh, uh, milk and cookies. So, yeah, there you go. Anyway, so, yeah, I'm be, I'm drinking Samuel Adams Winter Lager here for this holiday season, and it is pretty good here. So, I, and I definitely need it today because, like I said, my voice uh, is uh, in recovery. So, on that note... All right, all right, boys and girls. Okay, so let's get right into it. I mean, Spider-Man, No Way Home. Um, this movie is it's 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 revolutionary in what it has in it as far as appearances, as far as the you know the the actors, actresses, characters that are in it. It 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 breaks a lot of molds. It breaks a lot of walls. And not just in MCU movies, but in in just movies in general, it kind of reminds me of what Spike Jones did in the movie Being John Malkovich. And what I mean by that is, is the movie was named after an actual actor. It had an actual actor's name in the title, and it and it featured a actual real life actor as one of the main characters, obviously John Malkovich in it. 
and it was just so out there. It's it's it just doesn't get done, right? I mean, there's I mean, there's no being Tom Cruise or you know being Sandra Bullock. I mean, it's it's it was so weird. And so this movie does kind of have uh, something like that uh, in it here. And you know what? Let's not be, let's not beat around the bush. Okay, that something is. <laughs> it just it just puts a big smile on my face when I say it, and it makes me it makes me chuckle here. This movie doesn't just have Tom Holland, Tom Holland Spider Man slash Peter Parker. It has Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield Spider Man slash Peter Parker in this movie. And I'm not talking about just some little appearance, some little cameo, you know, Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man landing on top of the Chrysler building, you know, and hey, everybody, I'm Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man, and then, like, just disappearing. You know, Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man, like, landing on top of the Empire State Building. Hey, yo, everybody, yeah, I'm Andrew Garfield. Remember me from my two sucky Spider-Man movies? It was not Andrew Garfield's fault those movies sucked. But he did his job as Spider-Man in those movies. But they are both in this movie, and for a long time. I mean, they are in there for most, if not all, of the third act in this movie, and it is just glorious. It is just fantastic. Um, When they appeared, (laughs) the theater just erupted, okay, because, you know, in, you know, Hopefully you've seen the movie. Like I said, I gave you the the disclaimer uh, earlier here, but the you know right you know Andrew Garfield of course shows up first, and you know just the clapping, just the applause, just the excitement in the theater. And let me just say, it is really good to see a lot of people in the theaters again. I mean, I, I know that you know a, a, an M's a big MCU event movie like Spider Man No Way Home is is going to get more people in the theaters than say House of Gucci, right? You know, but uh but it was just it was just damn good because it was it was good to get that movie going experience again. I mean, you know, the reason that people that say, Oh, I could just have the movie theater experience at home you know, like uh the reason that they're full of crap, you know, because you're not gonna get like that sense of community where people are laughing and you know, applauding and Ooing and awing and all at the same time in the theater, and I don't care how big a flat screen or how big a projection screen you have in your house; it's not as big as an actual movie theater screen. Get out of here with that, <laughs> you know. But but it's it was it's it's it was a great experience, and so there was a moment like that when you suddenly see Andrew Garfield show up on the screen, and it was it was great. It was it was fantastic. So and then later on, Tobey Maguire's uh, Spider Man uh, shows up, and it just it just blew my mind because I'm like, how often do you see that in a movie? You you don't see that. I mean, you know when the, you know, when Christopher Nolan did his you know Batman trilogy, the Dark Knight trilogy, you didn't all of a sudden see Michael Keaton's Batman and Val Kilmer's Batman show up and George Clooney's Batman you know show up in 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 the movie. No. The the whole multiverse a plot in the Spider Man movies and then pretty soon in the Doctor Strange movies just opens it up to all these cool ideas like this. And so that's what makes Spider Man No Way Home like it is literally the ultimate Spider Man movie. I mean, it's got it all. And the chemistry between Tom Holland, Andrew Garfield, and Tobey Maguire is just spot on, just just delectable. Just it just it just it's just right. It's just perfect. It just feels like a perfectly fitted Spider Man, you know, outfit. I mean, it just it's you know it's it's just perfect. Um, they all lend their own personality. To you know their their portrayals of, of Spider Man in this, I mean they just uh, they have great chemistry together. Um, it's just kind of fun how playful they are uh, with each other. They're three geniuses. I mean Peter Parker's character is a genius, and so you got three geniuses working together. 
uh, to you know to, to to fix problems, to solve crimes, to save the day. And uh, I guess Andrew Garfield. I mean, I didn't like his movies, but he really does a great job uh, in in this movie. I mean, I I, I like Andrew Garfield in, in other stuff too. I mean, you know, he first came on the scene as a. Uh, Eduardo Savern in the social network like over 10 years ago and then uh he's really good uh in a movie that just came out on Netflix called Tick Tick Boom uh that's great he plays Jonathan Larson who wrote Rent um in that movie he does a great job in that Under the Silver Lakes a great obscure unknown movie with uh Andrew Garfield in it I mean just you know obviously um Hacksaw Ridge uh, just just great movies and so and he he brings it he's got one of the funniest lines in this movie here about when Tobey Maguire shows up as Spider-Man, he's he's dressed up in like in civvies, right? He's not in his Spider-Man uh, outfit or anything like that. And uh, so you know they're about to go out and uh, and handle business, right? And Andrew Garfield turns to Tobey Maguire like, uh, you know, are you going to uh, keep uh, dressing like a cool youth pastor, or are you going to uh, get your Spider-Man outfit? <laughs> it's just a great a great line, and. Um, and so yeah, and Tobey Maguire does a great job in it as well. He's you know he's kind of like the elder statesman of this you know of the Spideys, and he he just he lends some well earned Spidey wisdom. You know he's got the most honed Spidey sense, the you know the most honed Peter Tingle as Aunt May uh, would would call it, and he just he just brings that uh, to the role. And there is one scene. In this movie, where, um, you know, Aunt May, she 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 dies in this movie, you know, and if you've already seen the movie, you know, you know this, and that scene where, where Peters is breaking down on top of the high school, and Ned and MJ are there comforting him, and the other Spider Men are comforting him as well. Woo! All the feels, all the feels. I'll tell you, it's uh. Man, it gets you, especially if you like you grew up with like Spider Man and and in the, in those movies. So just 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 terrific, just terrific. And then when they're you know we got the final battle scene on the Statue of Liberty and and you know they're they're running into some uh, running into some difficulties with uh, fighting the the villains there and and uh, I think it's Tom Holland that kind of brings all the Spider Men together and says hey we got to figure out a way to like work together here man like we're we're getting our you know butts kicked here. And they just like get together. They're just like broing up, man. It's like Spider Bros, you know. It's just just fantastic. And uh, it's like, man, I'm so so glad that I live in a world where you got like great scenes like that in a in a Spider Man movie, man. It's great. I'm gonna drink to that. Oh yeah, that was a long talk on that. I'll tell you, I need that. Ooh. But yeah, it's just it's just fantastic. And uh there's just so many great Easter eggs and callbacks uh in this movie as well. I mean like <laughs> Andrew Garfield cracking Toby Maguire's bad back in this. That's just like a, a callback to Toby Maguire movies where he's like, My back, my back <laughs> That was just great there and then um and then as you know, Willem Dafoe uh, is in this movie as well, reprising his uh, his Norman Osborn Green Goblin role from the first uh, Sam Raimi Spider Man, and you know I just like his uh, I'm something of a scientist myself line <laughs> that he just throws out there in this another callback uh, to Spider Man the first Spider Man, and then Andrew Garfield, you know getting to save MJ from falling to her death. I mean that was just great. It just provides some catharsis. You know, for his his Spider Man, since he unfortunately wasn't able to save Gwen Stacy, you know, in in the Amazing Spider Man too, and so I'm sure he's he's been broken up and haunted about that, and just him being able to save MJ from falling to her death, uh, it just provided some great catharsis uh, for him. So that was a great moment, and then you know, also then, hey, even the Lego Death Star from Spider Man Homecoming uh, makes a return in this movie. You know, you just gotta. You know, don't blink or you'll miss it, but you'll see it, uh, or you know, you saw it in this movie here. I, I know I'm gonna 
watch this movie, you know, like probably a thousand more times, and I'll, you know, I'll definitely I'll see it uh, there again. But that's just it's just a yeah, it's just great callback uh, to that. You know, so it's kind of funny that you know it's not you know when you see it, it's not fully finished, kind of like it wasn't you know in, in the first Star Wars. You know, <laughs> it's like it's a you know, it's not fully operational, you know. This is not a fully operational Death Star, just like in the first uh, Star Wars. So it's like uh, that that John Watts, that director of all the Spider-Man movies, that, that wink, wink, nudge, nudge, you know, that's uh, uh, only nerds like me would, would get all that uh, all that stuff right there, all those Easter eggs. But And it's just, you know, and this movie does have some, you know, great cinematography in it as well. That's not something I, I say a whole lot about uh, MCU movies, Usually the look of them are just kind of, you know, it's got that same uh, MCU palette uh, to it, and it just does just does nothing for me. But there is a, there, you know, there's that great scene after uh, Aunt May unfortunately dies, and where Spider Man's, you know, in the rain, and you got the rain, and you got the, you know, the lights kind of casting off the raindrops and reflecting off his face, and the rain's falling down his face, and I don't know if it was intentional, but it's like. John Watts, you know, was doing an homage to Blade Runner, you know, because it looks like Rutger Hauer as Roy Batty in the climactic scene in uh, Blade Runner there where uh, Rutger's Hauer does his classic speech, um, you know, about uh, tears and rain, you know, moments moments passing time, like moments in rain, or like tears and rain. I totally blew that line, but <laughs> but it's but it's 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 kind of a homage to that scene. So that was really that was really cool. But I wouldn't be surprised if that was a homage to that because you know John Watts is probably just obviously a big movie nerd like me, and that's a, a great homage uh, to a great movie there. And then uh, also, uh, as you saw at the you know the, I think like the the mid credits scene. In uh, after you know Spider Man Far From Home, uh, J. Jonah, you know J. K. Simmons as J. Jonah Jameson, you know makes an appearance and he's got a role in this movie, but it's kind of it's kind of a sideline role. Uh, you know he's he's uh, just just kind of an antagonist uh, on the sidelines. There he's not like a really like a main player, but it's funny him just basically just being a dick. You know like <laughs> like he was in the first three Spider Man movies and. You know, apparently, I guess he's the only character who's the same guy in in all the multiverses. J. Jonah, we got the same J. Jonah Jameson in this multiverse or in this universe as uh, was in Tobey Maguire's uh, universe there. So, but it's it's kind of funny how yeah he's doing. It's not the Daily Bugle newspaper anymore. It's DailyBugle.net. dot net. You know, you got to keep up with the times, and so he's uh, doing a, a, a you know a vodcast there or a webcast and. It's kind of funny, you know, he's sitting in front of a green screen or blue screen doing his little, you know, his vodcast, and then he uh, they pan out, and it turns out like he's doing it from some crappy apartment. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, just uh, just desserts for, you know, a the, the you know the uh, the lame creep that uh, is the J. Jonah Jameson uh, character, but J.K. Simmons just, you know, has a great time uh, with that character. But so yeah, in addition to you know, Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield, you know, bringing their Spider-Mans from their multiverses into this movie. You know, you've got uh, their, you know, the villains uh, from each of their respective movies. And so, you know, you've got uh, Alfred Molina showing up first as uh, Dr. Octavius Octagon or whatever his name is. <laughs> I just I just call him Doc Ock. And, you know, just that scene where, you know, he tells them, uh, you know, he tells uh, Peter Parker and MJ and, and uh, you know, Ned, you know, what his name is. You know, like, oh, I'm Dr. Octavius Octo or whatever his name is, and then just kind of start busting out laughing. <laughs> that, was a, that was a great scene uh, there. And then, uh, like I mentioned before, Willem Dafoe, you know, comes back as Green Goblin, and he makes a great entrance. Uh, we've got Jamie Foxx as Electro. And uh, who else we got? To, oh, we got um, Thomas Hayden Church. As Sandman and Reeves Ifans as Lizard, uh, so he's like one of the lesser known uh, villains uh, in the universe uh, there. So I'm trying to think who I'm leaving out because we got plenty of plenty of villains in this movie. Uh, I think they, yeah, I think that I think that wraps it up for the villains right there. But that's enough, right? And so. Uh, they show up there, and of course, there's a lot of confusion on 
Tom Holland's Spider Man's part, in the Spider Man part, because you know, he's got these villains that are attacking him and it's just because they think that he's Spider Man and they don't know that he's not their Spider Man from their multiverse. And you know, I had to say like, you know, Willem Dafoe, you know, knocks it out of the park as Green Goblin in this role. He's just as menacing and creepy as he was in, you know, the the first Sam Raimi Spider Man. Because Willem Dafoe is a and you know, a great actor. I mean, we're talking platoon to live and die in L.A. I mean, just just plenty of of great roles uh, that he's been in, like Streets of Fire way back in the day. Uh, you know, he was a great in those movies. I'm, I'm sure I'm leaving plenty of Willem Dafoe movies out that uh, that he was great in. Uh, Alfred Molina as Doc Ock was in there uh, doing a great job. Uh, Jimmy Fox he brings something new to the electro role uh, because he kind of he kind of acts more like. Jamie Foxx in real life, you know, in this movie where he's just kind of a little bit more smooth and badass and streetwise and he was kind of a geeky nerd in uh, The Amazing Spider-Man 2 as Electro there. But, yeah, this this movie, uh, just, you know, you got to go see it. Um, it's it's going to be a movie that I'm going to go see in IMAX. I just saw it at the, at the regular th- theater screen, but I'm going to go check it out in IMAX uh, for sure because this begs to, to be seen on that and it's just you know it would just do it ultimate justice to see it there but uh, you know so Tom Holland's great in it uh, you know Zendaya is great uh, in it as well I mean just uh, you know Marissa Tomei and then you got John Favreau as uh, you know as happy in it so it's yeah, just just check it out trust me here let's you know, get out to the theater and check it out there. It's that's where it needs to be watched. You know, enjoy your movie watching community out there watching uh, this movie. I tell you. So, uh, with that, you know what? Hey, thanks a lot for bearing with my voice here. You know, it would be better next week. And uh, you know, just you know, as always, I appreciate you listening. This podcast wouldn't be the same without you guys. Go check it out on Apple Podcast, Google Podcast. Check me out on Twitter and Instagram under Movies America. You guys are the best. See ya. Hey guys, don't leave the video quite yet. Okay, I've got the popo. They're coming after me, and I don't have much time to tell you, but you need to like and subscribe this video right here down below. It's right down there. It's just what. It's waiting for you down there, okay? And make sure you watch these videos over here, too. You'll be doing me a big favor. I'll be in handcuffs pretty soon. All right. Thanks for watching.